Hello and welcome to this interview with Brain Plus. Uh, with us today we have CEO Kim Baden Christensen. My name is Christopher Bergen and I work for Finwire Media. Uh, with that said, welcome to the interview Kim and uh, please tell us about a bit more about Brain Plus and your business model. Thank you, Christopher. So Brain Plus is what we call a digital therapeutics company or a digital medicine company. And, and the business model is simply to have digital software like apps that are specifically designed to have a health impact on patients that you take through a regulatory process all the way to a reimbursed product. So very much like you would find it in normal drugs. And that means that you can get reimbursed per patient for a treatment. So that's really the ultimate business model in, in digital therapeutics. So it's very, uh, it's, it's a similar model that a lot of the life science investors are used to. Okay, I see. Uh, can you please elaborate a bit on like, what is digital medicine and what is digital therapeutics? So it's, it's a new and, and very rapidly upcoming industry, you can say healthcare is really undergoing massive transformation in terms of digitalization. What is special about digital therapeutics is that it has very rigorous standards for uh, getting regulated and, and it's evidence-based. So that means it goes through cl clinical trials similar to normal medicine. So it would be a phase one, phase two, phase three, and then get a either a CE mark or an FDA approval and eventually also go through reimbursement pathways uh, like the German DPA or the German DIGA. So that's that's really what makes digital therapeutics a digital therapeutic is how you approach the market and also that you can then get paid like you were medicine and you can be prescribed by a doctor or a clinician. Okay, okay, I see. Uh, you're planning to list the, the company and the reason why we're doing this interview is for you to speak about the company and explain your, your business model. Uh, uh, why do you think it's the right time to list the company at the moment and the capital that is raised, how will you allocate that capital in the business, so to speak? Yeah, so it's, it's the right time because we're at a point where after a number of years of doing very good R&D with some very strong both clinical and academic partners, a number of really uh, forefront universities, um, we are, we're now at the phase where we need to start taking them through a very a strict and focused process of, of getting regulated and eventually reimbursed. So now we have the technologies in, in place. Uh, we have a couple of core technologies. And, and we need to take it through that process. So that requires money as people from, again, life science are used to. Um, we have a number of, uh, of clinical trials going on. So the money will be allocated in a couple of ways. One of them is to expand the team. So we'll be hiring both on the technical side, on the scientific uh, front, and also in the, in the areas of, um, of uh, regulatory affairs and, uh, and, and medical. So these are some of the primary areas which will enable us to, to mature the products through this, this process. Then we'll be developing the products further to, um, to go through that process. And, um, and finally, we'll be, we'll be using some of that money as well on, on consultants for that type of process. Okay, okay, I see. Uh, you mentioned products there. Could you please elaborate on what products you offer? Yeah, so so we have a we have a, a number of we call them core technologies that are turned into products for a specific target audience. So the first one I want to mention is cognitive simulation therapy, and this is a uh, is a method for people with diagnosable mild to moderate dementia, and it's an it's an evidence based proven method that we have we are digitalizing or have digitized. Um, in collaboration with the leading experts in this field. This is a method that goes in and stimulates the brain. So you actually see improvements in things such as cognition, so attention and, and memory. Um, and, and this is a product that can, can have those, those similar effects and also allow it to get out to more people who are currently not being offered this type of treatment. So that's the, the first product you can say. The other key technology is what we call computerized cognitive training. And that is one where you go in and, and you actually 
target specific brain functions like attention and you train them with specific exercises. It, it feels and it can look like a computer game, but these are really going into validation studies and, and can go in and strengthen the neural networks of the, of the brain. And finally, we have a, a technology which is a, a uh, memory test originally developed by Oxford University. We have co-developed it further with them. And this is one that both has the future potential for early detection of Alzheimer's disease, but, but can also be put into a treatment solution as an assessment tool. Okay, I see. Uh, you mentioned your apps there and you, you mentioned like science behind it, but are they created on, let's say, science or how have you been inspired in developing these apps to treat these medical issues that you mentioned? Yeah, so very, very important question you asked there. So every, everything is based on science, both in terms of the initial design, not only based on publications that are out there, but based on also working with clinical and academic experts within the area of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. And then there is the, the process of validation that I was mentioning earlier, which is to take these technologies uh, through clinical trials. And we've completed uh, a couple of trials um, awaiting a publication for, for one of them. And then we have in our clinical development program, there are six trials ongoing in different target audiences within Alzheimer's and, and dementia with, with the three different technologies that I was just describing. Okay, I see. Um, could you explain a, like a typical client that you will, uh, that your apps or product, product will be like used for? Yeah, so I, I can explain, uh, let me explain two scenarios of, of, of use for, for example, the cognitive stimulation therapy uh, technology and product. So this would be used by a, a clinician with a person with dementia, for example. Uh, and right now that is how it is, this type of cognitive stimulation therapy is being used. So it's being used in clinics where groups of people with dementia, they meet and they, they are following this protocol. So this is what we're enabling them digitally and that would be the primary use case. So it would be used um, by clinicians in clinics with patients. So that's one, that's one user group. This can either be paid by the clinic or it can be on a large scale re reimbursement, which is the, the ultimate aim of, of everything that we're doing. Um, the other use case is what you call more of a standalone uh, digital therapeutic, which is when there is not necessarily a clinician involved. And this means that you can do it at home on your own. Um, in the case of conscious stimulation therapy, there's still a caregiver involved, which is the a family member that is living with the person with dementia. But for example, for computerized cognitive training, it can be done by a single person at their home on their own. And this makes it extremely scalable. So these are a couple of examples of the, of the different use cases and, and the different uses of the technologies. Okay, I see. Uh, in terms of your product, uh, do they re replace other products or services or uh, are they like entering a new market, so to speak? So also very, very good and important question. So let's, let's compare with the treatments available, for example, for Alzheimer's and dementia today. So there are some medicines with, with, with some effects, but not, nothing that um, in, in Denmark, for example, only one out of four people are getting these medicines. So it's a complementary treatment. It's not necessarily replacing it. Some people will not even get medicine. There, it just serves the purpose of actually giving, giving a treatment. Um, in, in the, for the people who are getting a medicine, it will be a complementary treatment and will also have additional effects beyond what the medicine can do. So there you can attack all of a sudden the, the condition from two different, two different angles. And then in terms of, of, of uh, replacing or being new, I think primarily it is for, let's say clinicians that are already using a cognitive stimulation therapy protocol it is enabling them, it's not replacing them. In terms of, of people who are living at home and are not being offered any type of treatment, including a cognitive stimulation therapy treatment, this will be new in the sense that all of a sudden, a lot of people will be offered something that they weren't offered before or cannot be offered because there are not enough resources or, or reach in the healthcare system to offer that. Okay, I see, I see. Uh, 
if we look at the market, um, how, how large would you say that your approachable market is? So we, I would say this is a multi-billion uh, US dollar market <clears throat> that we're looking at for dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Just to give you a couple of, of figures to take into comparison, the, the annual treatment cost of dementia in, in Europe and the US combined are around 600 billion US dollars. And it, that's expected to, to rise to on a, on a global scale to 2 trillion US dollars in, in about 10 years. So it's the number is almost unfathomable. It's really it's really a big number. Now correlate that with the forecast for digital therapeutics, which is forecasting that the the totality of the digital therapeutics market in around I think it's 2028 is around slightly below 20 billion U.S. dollars. Out of this, we would estimate that, and this is this is a slightly a range. So two to five billion U.S. dollars will be the addressable market for for Brain Plus. And here you have to consider that this is not only for people who are diagnosed with dementia. It's also people who are at earlier stages. It can be people with what is called mild cognitive impairments. And even later, we can move to people even earlier, for example, with, with what is called subjective cognitive impairments. And then we're including a larger and larger group of, of users and, and potential patients. Okay. Uh, and these clients, you mentioned that they haven't sort of developed, for example, Alzheimer's, as you mentioned. How do you... Are you in contact with doctors uh, to find these clients that aren't there yet, so to speak, or does your uh, products and app, etc., uh, like give a red flag to people that might be entering this like medical stage? So, so um, the people may have Alzheimer's disease already, but they may not have the full-blown dementia, which is when you can really start seeing the the deterioration of the ability to take care of oneself. So in, in answer to that, uh, some of the technologies we have are, are meant for early detection. This is not our immediate focus. It's a little bit later focus in our, in our development plan. So our immediate focus is more on the treatment part, starting with people who have mild, mild to moderate dementia, and then expanding further backwards into people with mild cognitive impairment. And these people are usually identified at, at memory clinics. So people who are referred by a, a doctor to a memory clinic, the memory, memory clinic will do tests and they will find out that there are certain cognitive problems that, uh, that would classify them as, as an MCI, a person with MCI or mild cognitive impairment. Okay, okay, I see. And, and looking at the so like a payment uh, model of the, of the business model, so, so to speak, will it be a, like a one-off cost or would you have a subscription-based fee for clients or how will that look? So let's start with the reimbursed model because that's really the, the long-term most interesting one. Um, and again, that is different from market to market depending on how they're built. But what we're seeing, for example, in Germany is that there is now a national reimbursement pathway, which means that you get approved and then you'll be paid per treatment a, a certain amount um, for, each, for each person using it. And that's reimbursement on a national level, be, meaning that any... German with dementia could qualify for reimbursement of, of that treatment. And so in that case, it will be the, uh, the insurance companies paying for that. Um, the health insurance company is paying for that for, every, for, for the person. And, uh, and you can see prices in, in Germany for the German DIGA process, which is the name of the reimbursement process, um, from anywhere from two, 200 to 400 euros per treatment. And then you have other 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 places that have more chronic recur, like when it's a chronic care situation, you can have more recurring where you get a month monthly fee for providing the service. So that's another model that that we're seeing. We also seeing a, a software as a service type setups, but that's if you're selling more directly to a clinic and you either are charging per clinician or per patient. So and then you're charging on a on a on a time based uh, recurring fee. Okay, okay, I see. Uh, we mentioned previously that you are planning a listing company. What will be the financial status of the company after the listing? And uh, how's your burn rate? How will your burn rate look like uh, looking out a few quarters? So when, when we have uh, the funding from, uh, from the IPO, we'll have enough funding to get us to 
basically the exercise of of the warrant, which is a, is the first uh, in uh, for a Danish IPO since we're a Danish IPO, so we'll be the first company to have a warrant attached to the IPO stock stock purchase. So that's really an interesting proposition uh, that are, that is well known in Sweden. Um, so the money will carry us to that, and that and the proceeds from the warrant will carry us even further. So we're looking at a two those two things included. We're looking several years ahead into the future where we will be where we will be funded on. on uh, as a company to finance these activities that we were discussing earlier. And if we look out, let's say two, three, four quarters, what will be uh, the company's primary focus? So one thing is to ensure that the, we get all the results from the clinical trials that are already ongoing. Uh, the second would be to make some of these key hires that that is one of the reasons that we are doing the funding uh, right now. So, and, and the third one is to really uh, mature, especially the cognitive simulation therapy technology uh, further in, in the process towards a, a product that we will uh, launch into the market. Okay, okay, I see. Great, thank you for all your replies to our questions and uh, I wish you the best of luck, luck with the IPO. It will be a lot of work <laughs> in front of you. Uh, oh, yeah. And good luck with uh, developing uh, the product. Thank you so much, Christopher. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Uh,